Well, hello, welcome to my art studio. Today I'm going to be showing you a little paper tutorial, a paper craft stationary business tutorial on how I make cheater journals. I'll show you them in a second, but if we haven't met before, hello, welcome. My name is Rebecca. I run Lucky Start Studio. That's my art studio. I do like a stationary business, but I also just make art. I do some sculpture, I do some painting, I do a little bit of everything. Uh, and that's just kind of what my whole deal is. So on my channel, I do studio vlogs and I do art stuff, but I also do tutorials and I know that you guys really like stationary DIY things, especially if you are running a stationary business, maybe you're just getting started and you wanna make some products yourself rather than outsourcing them yet, if you're still on a budget, whatever your reason. So today we're gonna to be looking at how to make cheater journals. Here's a whole bunch of them. So what is a cheater journal? Why do I call it a cheater journal? Well, they're cheating because I'm not doing book binding from scratch. I am buying these blank little notebooks and remaking them so they're very cute with my art on them and they're ready to be sold. It's not really cheating per se. There's actually still some sewing involved using the method that I'm gonna show you, but it's a really easy way to make little notebooks without having to outsource them in a big batch or spend a ton of time figuring out how to cut paper, uh, measuring everything. I'm not a huge bookbinding expert. I find it a little time consuming, but I really appreciate people who do it. So um, to not step on anyone's toes, these are cheater journals or notebooks. We're gonna take a look at these a lot closer up when I move over to filming overhead when we do our tutorial. It is a little bit of a longer tutorial, but it's because I'm showing you every step along the way and explaining my decision-making processes. That's partly because you guys tell me that's the kind of instructions you like, but also so that you can decide if you wanna do something different than me. You don't have to follow my instructions perfectly. This is just how I do it. And I figured these things out through trial and error. I have a bunch of cute designs. I have my rainbow puppies version. I have these little bumblebees, which I really like. I have this grumpy bear that I made that <laughs> can't even see it because of the band. Anyways, no one really likes him, so that doesn't sell very well. I have a pretty flower design and I have an anchor design too. Those are just the ones I have made up at the moment. So why do I make these? What do I use them for? How can you use them? I made these because I wanted to have a very low price point item on my market table. I invented these when I was doing markets every week. I'm not doing them every week anymore, but I still do the markets and my online store. I invented these because I have two people who particularly come up and buy these. Number one are little kids who come up and they have like $5. I sell these for $5. Uh, more on that in a moment. Little kids who are like, what can I buy with this? And if they look at like a sticker or something, that's they don't always see the value, but a little notebook, now that's a real prize. So it appeals to kids, they like it, it's also pocket sized. And I would also sell a lot to people who were buying multiple items to send off in gifts to people. I know that sounds like a really niche thing, but I would usually have um, typically like an older lady who would be like, I'm sending parcels to all of my nieces and nephews, and I'm trying to get a bunch of small things. They would that, that particular customer would usually buy like four or five of these. So they're like a good low cost item to have on your table. As I mentioned, I do sell these for $5. That is definitely on the lower end of what they are worth, especially when you see the steps that go into making them. However, based on my efficiency um, and the cost of materials and everything, that price works for me. You have to decide what price would work for you. Um, I'm gonna do another video about pricing items because I get a lot of questions about that. But in general, you wanna add in the cost of materials, which for this, um, it's less than $1.50 just to get the notebook. And that's really the only material other than ink, thread, and paper in my time. And then you want to add in your labor, which um, you can calculate however you like. These are not priced for wholesale. So I will never wholesale these items because there's just no margin. I would have to double it and sell them for $10. And then it would be weird that I sell it for half price somewhere else. This is just an item, um, almost like Costco chickens. Have you heard about, do you know about like the Costco rotisserie chickens, how they actually lose money making them? I'm not losing money on these, but like, it's so worthwhile to get people to buy from you or to buy from Costco that they will sell chickens at a loss so that people go in, go to the back of the store where they sell the chickens, get them, and then buy other things on the way out. Does that make sense? It's like a loss leader. This is, like I said, I'm not losing any money on these. I do make a profit, but it's the same kind of idea. Anyways, like I said, a little bit of a longer video because it's thorough. I will include some timestamps in the description if you want to skip ahead through like my reasoning processes for things and just get to the tutorial parts. 
I also included a little bit of a Canva tutorial to show you how I design the graphics before I print them. And I include some alternatives to printing the covers, a couple different methods I've tried and done, and I'll show you some examples so you can really make this your own. Okay, does that sound good? I hope you like this video. It was fun to make. I like making these things. Um, they're just cute. I don't know, I just like them. So I hope you do too. Let's go over to my filming desk and make some. Here is the before and after of our project. So this is the journal as it comes and this is it when I'm done making it cute and custom for my brand. I get these in a big pack. I think there's 40 in a pack. I'll put on the screen if I'm wrong and the price that I pay, uh, but keep in mind that these prices do fluctuate and this is in Canadian dollars. I'll show you this one first. So basically we have a craft notebook. It is blank inside. The pages are a nice uh, paper. I like them. They're not too thin, not too thick. And uh, it is sewn binding. So you can see, hopefully there's like a sort of a beige thread that runs through there. And it is sewn with one signature. And that just means one collection of pages inside. If you can see, that's just a bunch of pages that are big rectangles sewn down the middle. It's a very simple construction. So that's what it looks like when I get it. And then when I'm done, it looks like this. I'm just gonna take it apart to show you the finished product. So I package it with this paper band. I just print a sheet with like several of these bands across, cut them out on my paper cutter and tape them in the back. And there's a little $5 sticker on the back there. I'm just gonna try and slide that off so I can reuse it. So this little notebook has my rainbow puppies design on it and it's front and back. I will divide it in half so you can see. So that's what it looks like. And basically the tutorial that I'm gonna show you is that I run this through the printer. And I'm just gonna show you how I do that so that it's optimally designed. In order to do that, I take apart this little notebook and you can see that this thread is a burgundy color. I just really like it, but it's different because I cut the stitching out of this, then separate the cover from the pages, print on the cover, and then I hand sew it back together, which is not difficult. Um, it's just once you do it once, you completely understand it. And I'll just kind of show you how I do that today. So in terms of materials for this project, Obviously I'm working off these little notebooks. You could also just get some paper and cut it into the size and shape you want and then punch the holes yourself using an awl or a hole puncher or just a really strong needle. So don't feel like you can't make notebooks if you don't buy this exact thing. I definitely, like I, I'm not trying to make you think you have to buy this. This is just the solution that I've chosen that is the right combination of affordable price, saves me time and looks nice right? Like, cause I can't be spending all of my time doing everything the hardest way possible in my business, even though that's my inclination. So that is why I've chosen to start with a blank uh, little notebook, but by all means, get your own paper, cut them and fold them and, and do it that way as well. Totally an option. For this first method, I'm also going to be using my bone folder. You can just find any sort of like rigid tool that you can use. We're just going to use this to smooth some edges and help with some folds in a little bit. I'm gonna be using a ruler just to measure this so that when I put it into my computer to design this shape here, I get the measurements right. So also I can set my printer to expect what size it's gonna print on. Then of course I have a design already done. Uh, you can create one yourself. You can make one in Canva. I'm gonna show you how I do this in Canva in a little bit. And then you're gonna need some sewing tools. So I have this thread that I use for it. I also use this little um, seam ripper, uh, which I use to pull the seams off of this, but you could use scissors or, or whatever other tool you have. In terms of thread choice, I like using a heavier thread. This is actually like a serger or like an upholstery weight thread. And I have this giant needle, but you can use a smaller needle as well. But I like to use a thicker thread rather than just a basic one, because I just feel like it's a little bit better for Book binding, it's a little sturdier and a cotton thread might just snap. You can also choose to make your thread more manageable by waxing it. And I have a big cartoonishly labeled block of beeswax. And in order to wax your thread, all I do is you just take the thread here and you just run it over the edge. And all that's gonna do is just make it a little grippier, which is easier to work with when you're doing fine little work like sewing book binding. Um, it is optional, I've done it without, but it just makes the job a little bit easier. So don't feel like you can't do this project if you don't have this, but if you're doing a lot of these, I would recommend maybe getting a beeswax candle. You could even just like use a candle and appropriate it. Um, you don't have to have this big like Looney Tunes looking block of beeswax. 
So that's basically all you need. It's not a ton of supplies. If you're crafty, this is probably a lot of stuff you already have lying around, aside from maybe the journal base. So I'm going to get started and show you what I do. So the very first step is we are going to want to take the stitching out of this cover. So I'm just going to grab my little seam ripper and do that. The only thing you really have to keep in mind is just to make sure you're not damaging the paper. So uh, a seam ripper is great because it's kind of, if you haven't used this tool before, um, it's sort of just like a little pointy hook, but it has a little U shape and the bottom of the U shape is like a little blade. Um, it's not super sharp, but it's great for cutting thread. So you can actually kind of just slide it underneath the thread and the seam. It's actually easier. <laughs> Clearly I'm struggling. It's easier if you open the book because it kind of loosens the tension slightly. There you go. So I got it under there. I just pop it through and it tore that. And then I just use the tool to pull the seam out. And again, just not tearing the paper. It's not too hard. This is uh, sturdy craft paper, but you want to just remove the seam. Once you've got the back one out, you can flip it over and the inside seam is actually just super easy when you've taken the back one out. There you go. So now there's no more strings and we can take this apart. I try and keep the pages together just because they're very neatly stacked. So I just put this aside. And here's our cover that we get to work with and decorate however we like. And actually it's at this stage that I'm gonna show you a couple other options for making this cover decorated, because I think this will be the best stage at which you can decide what you wanna do. So what I'm gonna be doing basically is flattening this out measuring this, designing something in Canva that is this size, putting this through my printer, and there we have our design. Now, there's upsides and downsides to that, right? It's very easy to mass produce because I'm not doing a ton of fiddly work, uh, but it is printing on brown craft paper. If you have a different color cover, then maybe that's not the same issue. But, you know, I think the brown craft looks great uh, for certain designs. Like, I think that's really pretty with the two color design. And I actually like it with the rainbow dog design as well, but you know, that may not be everybody's taste for their art. It's not as crisp as printing on white, for example. So yeah, there's other things you can do. One option would be to use this cover as a stencil and just print your art onto a whole other sheet of paper, trace it, cut it out so it's the exact size, and then just use a little tool, maybe even this, and just punch through each of those holes where the stitching was to make sure they're perfectly lined up. And then you could just, throw this out, not throw this out, but just not use this and put your other paper as the new cover, right? So you can just completely scrap this and just use it as a, as a template. Like um, this is just a greeting card, but I'm just saying like, you know, you could get this, trace that, cut that out, and then you would be able to take this, imagine it's cut to size with holes, put it on here, open it up, stitch it back up by hand and then you've got your like custom cover. So you don't have to use this, but I like to because I don't like to waste and also it's the right size already. And I think the craft look is cute. So that's one other option. Another is that you can use this same piece, but you could cover it with other paper, which is actually how I started doing these notebooks. And I have a few here that are still in progress I can show you. So this is kind of the first way I started making these notebooks. And I actually like how they look a lot but I just found it was very time consuming to make them this way. And so this is why I changed my methods. But basically I got my artwork printed on this nice like laser print uh, paper. It's not a cardstock or anything. It's just a regular printer paper, but I believe it was a color laser printer at the print shop that I got this done. And then I folded it using like book binding techniques just around the edges um, onto the cardboard sheet and then I glued it down and you have to be very precise with your glue. I also cut little slits here so that it would fold nicely. It didn't uh, crumple rather than if you didn't cut it, it would maybe crease a little bit more. And then at that point I put a stamp for my brand inside and then you just sew this in by hand. So it's a little bit thicker than if you just do this. Obviously there's a whole extra sheet of paper. Um, you do have the edges here to contend with. So it's there's just more to go wrong, I think is the issue. I didn't have any issues with them when I sold them like this, but I definitely ended up with some that I didn't sell because I wasn't happy with how they finished or this outside paper got damaged somehow, or it just, there was imperfections. Doing it this way with printing on it, a lot less imperfections in my opinion. But that's basically another option. You could just cover this. And I have seen people who don't take the stitching out and will actually just um, adhere their paper there and just like kind of fold it around. Sorry, I'm not showing you. They will just sort of fold it around the seam and tuck it in um, around there, which I think you could do. It would just look a little bit 
less perfect at the top and at the bottom, um, which wouldn't be a problem for everybody, but it, it isn't how I wanted it to look. So I did take the stitching out, but you know, if you were trying to save time, you can not do that. And of course, a fourth option, I guess, is that you could just decorate it straight up. Here's another one with the stitching still in. So you could paint directly onto this. You could use a stamp or a block printing and design that way. Um, you know, these are really limitless creativity. So that's just a few other options. But like I said, I've chosen the taking the cover off, printing out my computer method because it's the right combination of looks good, isn't too hard to do, but still crafty enough that I enjoy the process. And those are my priorities. Whatever your priorities are, you can choose the method that works for you. Okay, so aside from that diversion about covers, I'm putting the inside over here, throwing out this thread, and now we have this cover. So before this can go in the printer, and I'm telling you this from experience because I have done this a lot and made some mistakes, uh, printers don't like paper that looks like this. <laughs> it generally won't eat it. So uh, we're just going to use our bone folder or whatever other object you have. I'm putting this face down so the cover outside is down. And I'm just going to use this to smooth over the holes. And basically all the holes where the stitching is are kind of raised right now because I think this was just stitched in a machine and clearly it, it sewed from the outside in and just really punctured it. So I'm just going to use this tool to smooth these out just like this, like just rubbing over it really firmly. The holes almost look like they disappear, but they're still definitely there and they're easy to get a needle through when you re -stow them later. But I'm just really like burnishing them down and I'll even take this and kind of like fold it in the opposite direction, just to try and get this as flat as possible. Obviously you're not erasing the crease or the holes, but your printer will thank you and probably not snag nearly as much. I've only had maybe two ever that really kind of, the printer really chewed up. Um, but I, since I started doing this, uh, it doesn't happen anymore. So that's my recommendation, get it as flat as you can. And then we need to measure this and then hop over onto the computer and design our outside cover. And of course, by the way, you could do an inside design as well. Um, I just haven't. So if you were using these same notebooks as me, you can use my measurements, but you know, maybe do your own too. You never know, these manufacturers aren't always gonna be precise. So this is just like a millimeter shy of eight inches. So we'll just go with eight inches this way. And five and a half that way. So that's pretty easy. So what we're gonna be doing is setting up a document in Canva because that's where I just prefer to do this kind of design work. It's just the simplest interface. And of course it's free and online, so you can use it too. And we're gonna create a canvas that is the size of the two together. So we're not doing the cover separate, right? We're doing one big graphic and printing one big thing. So the canvas we're gonna be setting up on Canva, five and a half inches by eight inches, okay? So let's go do that. And then we'll design this and print this. And then I'll show you how I stitch it up. Some of you might already be familiar with Canva and just in case you aren't, I'm just gonna show this start to finish how to set up your design. So I've got Canva open here. This is, you can do all of this with a free account. You don't need to pay for anything. And it's just canva.com and I'm logged in. I'm going to go to the purple button in the top right corner, create a design. And we're going to go down to custom size right here. And then we change this to inches and our design was eight inches wide for the full length of the two covers and 5.5 inches tall. And then we'll create the new design. So this is basically the exact size of our cover when it's opened up. And to put a guideline in the middle to show where that fold is, which is helpful when you're designing, you wanna have these rulers visible first of all. If you don't see them, just go into file, view settings and show rulers and guides. So just click on that. And when they are here, you can click in this area and drag this purple line and that will act like a little guideline. It doesn't show up in your final design. Uh, it just helps you. So it clicks automatically to halfway through, which is four inches in. And there we go. Now we have a visual guide to show the back cover here on the left and the front cover here on the right. So basically design whatever you like at this point. Um, you can go and add in separate designs for either side. You can put in art prints or art elements that you've already designed. Just remember that if you are using the same journals that I am, it prints on craft paper, so it prints on brown. So any white areas or gaps are going to print, they're just gonna be the brown color of the craft paper. 
This is basically how I have my bees design set up. So some of the designs are overlapping across the uh, spine of the journal, but that looks nice in my opinion. And how close you get to the edge of this design is going to depend on whether your printer can do borderless printing. Uh, mine can, but I actually don't even use that feature very much. Uh, so you can just know based on your printer whether you want to go all the way to the edge or not. When you get your design done, just export it as a PNG or whatever format you prefer to print from. So I'm just going to go share, download, pick the file type. I have a pro account, so some of the other features are available, but you don't need to use those. Uh, PNG is the one I'm going to use and download like that. So here is that same file in the preview window, just on my desktop. I'm going to be feeding the paper into my printer with the front edge first. So I'm going to just rotate this right here so that it prints uh, in the right orientation. Looking at it this way, I noticed that the design is actually a little too far left, but I just made a duplicate and moved around uh, from my original file. So if I was going to really print this, uh, not just for a tutorial, I would make sure that this edge had a little more space and move the designs a little closer to the right. But that doesn't matter. I'm just doing a demonstration. Uh, all printers are different, so this may not be relevant to your printer, but I'm going to hit Command P. I'm using a Mac computer, and this is the print window I get. So I have my printer here. It's an Epson EcoTank 2400. Um, not typically great on cardstock and heavier papers, so um, don't necessarily recommend it for that, but I can force this paper through, so that's okay. Things we're going to be changing first is the paper size. So we're gonna go down to Manage Custom Sizes here. And uh, you could add in a new one and type in the size in millimeters. Is uh, my, my computer's Canadian, uh, much like I am, so it goes in millimeters. So I would just convert that or translate the size of the, your cover. So your eight inches in millimeters and your 5.5 inches in millimeters. Again, your computer may be in inches already, so don't, don't worry too much about that. Just make sure that the size of the paper is size to what you're printing on. It should look a little bit more like that where it takes up the full size of what you're printing on. Make sure that the scale is at 100% so that it's not shrinking uh, your design and creating more borders that you didn't want. And the last thing that I changed just to make my printer work the best it does is go down to print options. Again, if you're using a different computer, different printer, these buttons might look different. So the usefulness of this may be limited, but I go into print settings and then the media type options will vary based on your printer. If you're using an Epson like me, I pick envelope just because I think it's more equipped to handle something a little thicker. And for print quality, I always go quality or if you were doing just plain paper, I always choose the highest quality for anything I'm making as a product. Um, it does take a little bit longer to print, but it will look significantly better than if you used a lower run. And I hit okay. At this point, I load the cover paper into my printer tray and then you hit print and it should be good to go. This can take a little bit of trial and error. You might wanna have a couple backup journal covers you can test with just to make sure that things are gonna print the way you like. I definitely had to go through probably two of them that I had to do trial and error with before I got them printing the way I like, but now uh, they all turn out great. So let's go back to the workspace and I'll show you how to sew up the cover and the binding. All right, here we have my printed cover and I did my little branding stamp inside. That's just where I've chosen to place it on these ones. And we have the inside that goes with it. So I'm gonna show you how I stitch these up. It's pretty simple. I'll just show you the method and then you know you can always make it your own, but this is how I do it. So first thing is we would just wanna line this up and just kind of fold it so it goes back in place because we've spent a lot of time flattening this out. But you do wanna look for the stitching holes so they're not always going to be perfectly symmetrical. There may be an up or a down for this one. So um, just check that because uh, that's a little mistake I've made before. And like I see here, the bottom hole for the stitching is kind of cut off on this end and it's fully in the paper on this end. So I know that this way is up. So I have that. Now we're just going to get some thread and I'm going to use the big needle just so it's more visible on camera. And we'll just get a piece. Um, it doesn't need to, it's better to have it too long. I've definitely made it too short. I'm just doing like, I don't know, like two feet. And I'm just gonna cut it with this because I forgot my scissors. All right, now I am gonna just run this through the wax block because I have it and I can. It's just gonna make the thread less slippery, honestly. You don't have to, uh, but if you're finding it a little frustrating, you may wanna try, like I said, find a candle, a uh, beeswax candle and run it through that. There we go. So a little bit 
more tactile thread. And I'm just going to thread this needle. Wow, first try. Okay, we're good. We're on a good streak today. And I'm just going to pull this down. Uh, I'm not going to be doubling the thread over. I'm just going to show you how I get it started, but I'll just do single strand. You can do double strand if you want. Um, and I think I'm going to move this mat just so that the thread is more visible on camera. There we go. Don't mind all the paint on my table. So in order to sew, we're going to be opening this up to the middle and make sure everything is lined up. All we're going to be doing is a very simple stitch back and forth. This is not intimidating sewing at all. And just, you may want to try it once. If you don't like it, cut the thread, take it out, try again. Really easy to figure out. So we're going to start in the middle and I'm going to just take my needle and find, it doesn't have to be the exact center. I'm just going for a hole near the middle and I'm just pushing it through and you can see it came through the cover. Can you see it came through the cover side? Because these the holes all line up perfectly. So that's why it's nice to use these pre-made journals. You're not fussing about getting your holes evenly measured or uh, spaced out rather, or that everything lines up really nicely. So I'm just going to pull that through and leave a tail. See, I've left a tail there. I'm just gonna hold it with my thumb. I'm just gonna go to the next hole over on the outside and push that down through. There's the needle coming back up and we pull it. So now it's nice and taut, holding that one thread with my thumb, one stitch on the side, right? Okay. Now we're going to lay it flat on the table and tie a knot. And that's just going to be our anchor in the middle of this book. Put your needle over there. Just going to tie like a simple double knot with these threads. Make sure you leave a tail for you to work with, otherwise it gets slippery. We can trim it later. So there we have single knot. This is where the wax thread makes it a tiny bit easier. I'm sorry if my fingers are blocking the view, but we're just doing a little double knot. There we go. So that's kind of our anchor in the middle of this book. Now it's not going to fall apart, but I'm not going to test it. And at this point, all we have to really do is just do really simple back and forth stitches. Okay, so we're going to go to the next hole, push it down through, flip it over, and then find the next hole like that and do this all the way to the edge of the little journal. This is also really good practice. If you do want to get into book binding, this is like training wheels for real book binding. Just if you, it gets you more familiar with like the steps of sewing a binding. Okay, so now we've gotten to the edge. There's no more holes to sew through. And I've got this nice and taut, just pulling the string tight. And we're just going to go back through it. So every stitch that was under, can you, I don't know if you can see properly because it's a little bit dark, but basically we're going backwards and every hole that you came up through before you go down through next time. I'll show you on the other side, maybe it'll be more clear. So basically everywhere there is a gap. So you see there's like stitch, 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 and there's gaps. We're basically sewing over those gaps on the way back. So when we're done, every little inch has thread going through it. I hope that makes sense. It's not a super complicated stitch, but I think maybe in practice when you're doing this, it's going to be super clear. So if this is not the easiest to comprehend watching the video, I think that when you're doing it yourself, you'll realize that it's actually pretty straightforward. So we're just going to sew back over through our previous stitches, filling in those gaps where we left empty space. So now we've reached the middle where we tied our knot and we're just going to keep going. So on the other side, back through there, there's a little double stitch here in the middle. That's okay. Back down. Okay, there we reached the end of this side as well. You can see the difference between the two stitches there now, right? Like this side is like, there's like stitches between every hole and this one is every other hole. And so we're just gonna go sew backwards again, meet at the middle, tie this off, and that's literally it, then you're done. And this little sewing job is the one that I kind of like to do when I'm working at an event. I'll just bring this as like a craft to keep me busy while I'm standing there talking to people or because it's kind of busy work and it's interesting and people say, oh, what are you making? And then you can tell them and say, it's only $5 for this little journal or however much you're selling it for. And then they love it. So there we go. Okay, we reached the middle again and we have both our tails. Now this one's really long, but this one's short. So we have our two tails of the thread. I'm just gonna double knot them together again, trim them, and that's it.
There we have our tails knotted and I'm just going to trim them with the thread cutter. There we go. You can do a tidier job than that if, if you're not me doing a demonstration. And typically with thread, sometimes I like to like burn the ends of it, but because this is next to paper, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to singe the little book. So um, yeah, just trim that a little shorter with scissors. You could also use thread that is a different color. I use this dark thread because I personally like it, but also it's really good for doing this demonstration. But if you used a white thread, it would be fairly invisible in between the page here. And on the other pages, you don't see it barely at all. And that's it, that's our finished product. So if you see the back here, let me show you it open, very tidy, very seamless. Um, you don't see any of the thread really, it's just in the crease here. And when it's closed, it looks great. And then we have our custom journal. So like I said, I just do a little band around it. That's just printer paper um, with my logo on it to seal it off. You could put it in a little plastic sleeve if you wanted to, but, but I just, I don't bother for these ones. But that's our tutorial. And also you may find after you do this, these uh, tend to stay open a little bit more because they've been bent, but um, you can just kind of work them uh, to bend them a little bit to get the crease back in it. But also once you stack them up together and put them in your traveling thing for markets or wherever, they will, they will kind of compress back down. I hope that you liked this tutorial and you found it helpful. Like I said, you don't have to have the same little notebooks that I use. You can find them at the dollar store or anywhere else, or just make your own with some paper. That's a little bit of an extra step that um, I'm not going to show you today just because it's not something I do. I just use these. Um, but like I said, if you want the exact ones I have, I will put the link in the video description just in case, or you could just go to look at them and just know what it is that you're looking to buy um, if you want to find it somewhere else. Okay. I hope this was helpful. I hope you like them. Do you think they're cute? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions about making them or ideas on how to improve this method, by all means, leave some comments. I love seeing people's ideas and uh, you guys are really creative and come up with good solutions to problems that maybe I didn't think of. So I'd love to hear what you have to say and what you think about it. And I'm gonna work on coming up with some more paper craft tutorials for you for your stationary business as well. Please do subscribe if you haven't already because you can see more cute stuff that we'll make together. And I hope you have a great day. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm.